Hello, hello, guys. I have missed you so much. I missed Ricky so much. I've missed Carl so much. I missed Carl so much the other day I had a dream about him. <laughs> I won't go into details. Nothing like that, but I will not go into details. Anyway, um, <laughs> we are traveling together, okay? It was fun. Anyway, oh, we actually went... <laughs> We went to a really weird, it was like half religious ritual type tribe ritual thing, half sporting event in like a big ass stadium. I don't know, it was fun. Anyway, I mean, <laughs> I've been putting it off because I know Carl makes me laugh so freaking much and uh, my cough and, and my, my throat and voice can't handle it, but I cannot stay away anymore. I f I'm feeling a bit better today, so we're just... I'm not going full idiot abroad. We're going Ricky Gervais show because I like to watch them together, but this one's a little bit shorter and a little bit, you know, tamer. So uh, I'm going to see how I do with this one. But if I die, if this kills me, no, please no, I died for your guys' entertainment. <laughs> and also, if this does kill me, it means I died having a wonderful time laughing at Carl. So anyway. We have the Ricky Gervais Show, Season 2, Episode 7, Nightclub. Let's do this. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm about to cough. Oh, I also have this, like, weird, stupid, nervous cough. I'm, 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 I'm a mess. So, I was coughing before this, but just of the nerves of having, just, whatever. It doesn't matter. I just, let's go. Carl, as you're aware, you've obviously got many celebrity fans. And you've also got a new fan, Warwick Davis, who is the short actor okay. who many people will see in films like uh, Return of the Jedi, he also is in Harry Potter, he's three foot six and Ricky and I worked with him recently and uh, far from asking us about the uh, many celebrity names that we've worked with, the only person <coughs> he's interested in talking about of course, Mr K Pilkington. Well, yeah. He wanted to meet you Carl. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> who wouldn't? Well is he, is he alright to get on with? Why well, well, wouldn't he be? Um, just because sometimes when people aren't normal it's Was just... It? Sorry? No, I just mean when, when someone, <laughs> like, I've met a few little people in my time. The one that I, I, I met, I met a little fellow once, and he was all right. He got drunk really quick. Uh, but he was all right, but it took me by surprise. Only because, like, like I've said about when I met Steve for the first time, it's only that same thing. And then if I lived with the little fellow, I'm sure we'd get on a storm. What do you mean when you met There's Steve? There's a TV show waiting to happen. <laughs> Things wear off. That's that's like the world, isn't it? And it's the same with the little fella you're talking about. First time I see him, it, I'd, I'd be a little bit like, "Oh, what do you say?" Whereas once you get to know him, I'm sure he'd, he'd be a lovely little fella. There you go. <laughs> I don't know where to start, Steve. Right. But Warwick asks, really, um, what are your thoughts on short people, particularly in entertainment? Because of course they've uh, throughout the ages made an appearance particularly in fiction, Tom Thumb, of course, uh, the Oompa Loompas. What do I think of them? He's just wondering, you know, I suppose, what your take is. Um, they're all right. I mean, when I was on jury duty, every day I'd sort of see one pop in and he'd be sort of struggling getting on the chair. And he'd sort of, you know, he wasn't struggling in a way that he felt uncomfortable. He'd obviously climbed a lot of chairs in his time and this was just another one. And... I'd, watching him, it just makes you makes you think. You go, you know, I should appreciate that I don't have that problem every time I have to sit down and what have you. But I don't, you know, I don't think it's that bad. If I had to pick being really tall or really small, I'd go for the really small one because, you know, it's, yeah, it, the world's crazy. a more interesting place for him, isn't it? Everything's bigger. Oh, my God. It's, if they drew that like that, I want to know what their actual faces look like. <laughs> Just the absolute horror. You know, it's, it, the world's a more interesting place for him, isn't it? Everything's bigger. Do you know what I mean? We go to New York and go, wow, look at this. And they go and they go, oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Everything's a lot bigger. Everything's more amazing. Sure. Food portions. Everything's a bonus. So out of the two, I'd be small. And maybe that's what I'd chat to Warwick about for a bit, just to get to know, get to know him. Brilliant. It's a shame in a way that he's not being able to pop in. I'd like to hear that conversation. But I've got... Um, you know, speaking of like weird stuff and that. I've got a new... Well, we uh, weren't, but go on. No, I've got a new book. Do you know I had that Freaks book? The top 50 Freaks. Got a new one sent to me. Really? Uh, yeah. And do you know, like, everything um, normally has a name? So, like, if it's uh, the two-headed fella, 
you know, they're all nicknames like that, aren't they? There's, They've got two nicknames, I imagine. Uh, but this new book I've got, right, mm. on the cover of this one, it's got, like, a woman with three breasts, right? And she's called the, the three-breasted woman, as you'd expect. <laughs> the one face... Why is she posing nude, though? That's what I want to know. Tart. Well, she looks happy. <laughs> and there was a, a fellow with, like, one one face but two bodies. In one face but two bodies. <laughs> One face, two bodies. What do you mean so one weird. face, two bodies? <laughs> Surely oh, no. one head, two bodies. Uh, head as well, but it was mainly the face. That was weird because he looked fed up. <laughs> sort of... What are you talking about? How what can are you, you talking have a face about? without a head? How can you have... What do you mean? <coughs> How did it join to the neck? No, it did It did have a, a head, but the fact is it, it was weird that I had one face to me. What do you mean? Well, if you've got one he had, head, you'd yeah, have one face. Yeah, I know, but it was just... It was the fact that... He had one face and two bodies that I didn't think... But why do you keep I'm saying getting one it. face and two bodies as why opposed to one, one head? head and two bodies? I understand well, it, the I man with one face. Yeah, but now I've got one body. Yeah, he's well, got... surely he's the man with two bodies then. Again, the description. Oh. You, I, mean, I, roll I, up, roll I up, understood the man it. With one face. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's full of stuff like that, right? And what I'm saying is that fella, you know, the one-faced man... The three-breasted woman. He wouldn't be known as the one-faced man, is what I'm saying. Well, they've all, that, they that all... That isn't the peculiar thing about him. Yeah, well, they all had names like that. Right. But there was one thing in it that didn't even have a nickname. It was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? It, was ju- it just said un- unidentified. What, uh-huh. what does it look like? Um, that reminded me of freaking the Night Fury and... <laughs> And to train your dragon, they had the booklet of all the dragons and they had all the info, but except for the Night Fury, everything was unknown, unknown, unknown. <laughs> what, what does it look like? Nobody knows. Um, <laughs> sort of, sort of testicles for eyes. <laughs> oh, God. That's, 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 it just reminded me when you talked about What do you mean, strange. testicles for eyes? That's the and stuff of it, nightmares. Have a body? I didn't even look at that. Oh, oh for fuck. No, so that's what I'm saying, though. You're attracted to, <coughs> to the odd, oddness of the thing. And that's what I was saying about Warren when he walks in. Warren. Warwick. You know, it, it, it'll be odd about Warren when he walks in. Warwick. You know, it, <laughs> it, it'll be odd I love that him. they even stop the music for the Warwick. <laughs> and then, I'm sure... For him, it will be, yeah. He'll get used to you. I've got my head round it a bit more. And, and the way that there's loads of people in the world... Mm. And yet, you don't see people with, like, dangly eyes more often. It amazes me. <laughs> I love the fact that he's amazed by not seeing freaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's incredible. He's walking down the street going, oh, everyone's got one head. That's yeah. weird. Suzanne, I don't see any dangly eyes today. No, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? What's going on in the world? <laughs> oh, God. Went out the other night with the lads. Um, you know, there's a few of us, you know. Young, free and single. You Must can... look like the swingers. Oh, it was pretty... It looked like a boy band had gone out. It looked like, really? It looked like, you know, and sing and hit oh, the streets. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. A friend of mine said, let's go to a club. Right, I've been to a nightclub for a long time. I haven't been... Is that because your glasses steam that when you walk in out of the cold? That is a problem in the winter. I genuinely... It's not... It's very difficult to make a good impression. When you... As you walk in, your glasses steam up straight away. And... You know, you you got to take them off and clean them and stuff, and then you know you get a bit. Of and your wife runs. You pull your wife runs up oh. in the jeans, yeah. clean them on that, or the back of a girl's dress. <laughs> oh god! But um, we cruise down to the club. It's one of those big sort of London super clubs, and uh, it's a bit of a queue. I think it's a bit of a chore, but we're queuing up. We're in good spirits. We're looking at it. it sounds pretty funky. We can hear the music coming out. You know, we've been in the queue for quite a while. Twenty twenty five minutes. Forget it. Twenty five minutes. Well, yeah, we were pretty excited by this point. The doorman says, uh, hello, lads. He said, yeah, we're coming, please. He went, no, you're not. I really? Want. He said, we're not, you're not coming in. And he just immediately lifted the little rope and sent us away from the queue, right? And we were slightly perplexed. We were, we were dumbfounded. We didn't know what to do. We, we, it was like this, it, this it couldn't be happening. It didn't make sense. We just que- queued up what was going on. And so um, my friend said, well, we've got to find out why he's not going to let us in. So he goes yeah. back over. I thought what you wanted to do. You wanted to tie him up with logic. That'll show <laughs> a bouncer. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, show him how educated you are and how you can win an argument and make him look stupid. You You'll go. be in that club in no time. <laughs> That's <laughs> what they appreciate. <laughs> they love that. Because what they respect is being made to look like a fool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's so weird to me. Whenever Stephen shares a story, 
It's just like between him and Ricky and Carl has no part of it. Not even laugh. You can't hear him laughing in the background. You can't hear him nothing. It's just like it like cuts him off. They build a brick wall between them and Carl and they just share the little moment and his little story and have their little laughs. And then he's he's reincorporated later for a different story. It's weird. <laughs> so we went over and uh, they, they really look up to intellectuals. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So one of our mates goes over and he says, uh, why didn't you let us in? And he went, because you didn't have any girls with you. No. <laughs> no, I'll tell you this. That's kicking you when you're down. <laughs> because when you're out on a Saturday night trying to get into a club to meet women, and the reason you're not allowed to go in a club to meet women is because you haven't got any women with you, that's just salt in the wound. It's so humiliating. So um, a friend of mine says that there's a VIP entrance over there. And there was like a woman with a clipboard, you know, the guest list. Uh, separate entrance. She said, you know, you've got a little bit of profile, Steve. Why don't we try and use your... You ran out got your golden globe in your enemy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I always uh, I always carry, uh, you know, some of my cuttings with me. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, uh, so, and I felt a bit self-conscious about that. I was thinking, I'm not into this, you know, it's a bit awkward. But he said, look, don't worry, you just stand here. Just stand here, just like you're having a conversation. I'll go over, I'll say, I'll point him out, I'll go, oh, there's you know, Steve Merchant over there, at the office. Or oh, God, Steve! So I thought, well, you know, well, the thing is, we were out, and I was I was a bit frustrated, and I thought, you know... Uh, Why not? We may as well try everything. So um, so I stand there, with my friend goes over, and he has a word, and he comes back, and he says, uh, it's fine. She's, she can't let us in the VIP entrance because she's not allowed, but what she can do is walk us to the front of the queue, right? And walk in front of the queue and explain. So I think, okay, fine. This oh, is getting God. embarrassing, so we walk though, past isn't it? everyone else, right, to the front of the queue, right? She goes up to the guy. She says, uh, this is Steve Merchant, office. The guy goes, I know he is. We're not letting him in. Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> By now, of course, some people have recognised me. So they're having, trying to have my photo taken. <laughs> so there's people inside the uh, line that's being allowed in the club. I've got to lean across the rope to have my photo taken with them, even though I'm not allowed in the club. So they go, oh... All right, this is Steve. They're having the photos taken, right? Camera phones and that. They're going into the club where the music, the party's kicking off. I'm outside waiting for the next chump who wants to have his photo taken. I mean, it was mental. So, um... That's unbelievable. I was furious. And then one guy, I remember he was, he was chatting, and he goes, oh, yeah, brilliant. I love the podcast and all that stuff. I love Carl. Is Carl with you? I said, oh, Carl's not out here. And his girlfriend, she went, who's that? And he went, oh, it's just Steve Motion, he does the office, he does the thing. And she went, who, who cares? Who are you, Bruce Forsyth? And it's that thing when suddenly I'm being humiliated and embarrassed <laughs> by someone's girlfriend. I never asked for that. I never asked for her opinion on me. I'm sorry if I don't impress you, if I'm not sufficiently famous for you. But it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. It's your girlfriend who brought it up. It was like I'd gone over to her and tried to show off, and she was annoyed. I was, so by now, I was just furious. Oh, so God. I thought, forget this. Well, I was walking down the street, and there's a, a group of um, builders sitting down having a cup of tea. One of them goes, all right, Rick. I went, all right, mate. The other one went, not as fat as on telly. <laughs> I went, oh, thanks. Not as fat as on telly. So he went with, well, you are fat, but you look even fatter on telly. He didn't well, say, camera... oh, God, you don't look... <coughs> <coughs> the camera does add 10 pounds, no? Fat, but you look even fatter on telly. He didn't say, oh, God, you don't look fat at all, or... Oh, you look, you, look, you, look, you look big on telly, but you don't look... Just went with not as fat as on telly. Mm. And but, there's nothing I could say, but cheers, mate. Now, when you said cheers, mate, cause you, did you say that because you were... Because I'd say cheers, mate, because I'd be a little bit scared of them. No, I was I'd obviously worried about like sarcasm and, you know, I laughed or I laughed or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you can get away with sarcasm I'm, with working-class blokes. I'm I a little could... bit more secure with a working-class man no. than you, aren't I? I'm terrified of them. I feel like they're going to turn on me at any minute. You don't feel confident sort of backing in a lorry driver? Terrified. All oh, right. Because okay. if I did... He'd, le he'd probably lean out and just go, go and get your dad, mate. Yeah, not you. Fuck off, I'm not interested. Not you. Yeah. What? What? Oh, my God. Oh, this isn't even a story to tell. Ah, whatever, screw it. It's just, it, it, because Laurie's a truck, right, basically? For some reason. You guys refer to trucks as Laurie's? That, 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 that's a thing, right? Okay, um. Nothing. I, I just, I shouldn't even have brought it up, but you guys are gonna be curious now if I don't say anything. But I was just, I was, I got to my car back from work and some jerk had really boxed me in. I was like, I was in, 
on the street, obviously. I was really tight in between two cars. So I had to do like a thousand maneuvers back and forth and back and forth to, you know, be able to angle myself to actually leave the spot. And at the left, after a thousand freaking maneuvers, at the last second, I was like, yay, I'm free, finally. I was, I was, you know, pulling out of the space and freaking a huge truck, one of those really big garbage trucks, but it was like an extra big one because it's the one that has the army things and grabs the, the big container and dumps it and whatever. Stopped. He saw me. He freaking saw me and he did it on purpose, which really pissed me off. But he stopped himself right in the perfect spot where I could not move anymore. And uh, took his sweet ass time to empty the freaking containers. I mean, I was mad. I was mad. I was already mad that I got boxed in so like freaking tightly. And it took so long to get out of there. And then that guy did that. I, I, was, I was off work. I just wanted to go home. I know it wasn't a good story, but I, like I said, it reminded me. I brought it up. Whatever. My bad. Let's go. Oh, is everything on the way down? Okay, back to Carl. There we go. <laughs> that jingle there signifying, of course, once again, another reading from the diary of Carl Pilkington. I feel like it bothers Stephen just as much as it bothers me, that stupid jingle thing. Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints, um, just what? brings up who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's abreast? medical complaints, um, just brings up the speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital because previously you'd had. I've been in. Oh, yeah, the I've been kidney in and out stones. Of that hospital, just with uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you. And uh, yeah, had kidney so, stones, all right. No, no, but seriously. I had a bit of a lion today because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob, but I also have to get up at 5.50. Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but you, you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, for... I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots and it's my job to do the washing up. So much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that. People who get their last dinner on death row. I love the dress up. thingy. Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other day. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> you were five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later, I'd been knocked out. Oh, I God. I got really when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone, so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it, and there was no hiding place. Oh, my I God. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found... So that was for nothing? Oh, I'd be furious. Furious. ...me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Boswell! <laughs> it's quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. <laughs> it's... it's the Roswell incident. Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60-year-old... You can't even like, blame it on a typo or anything. <laughs> Old fella. The Roswell incident. <coughs> Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60-year-old fella shouting at the nurse about his pillows. Mm. I don't think I slept through a full hour with one thing or another going on. My bed was next to the toilet, so I kept hearing the flush. How do they sleep in hospitals, though? They wake you up to give you fucking sleeping pills and things, don't they? How do you sleep in there? I don't, I don't know what it is. There's no air. There's, there was an old fella across from me who kept breaking wind. He didn't even try and cover it. <laughs> he was just of that age where he didn't care. Just like, that's what I do. I'm in the hospital, leave me alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He's, uh, I talked to him because at first I felt sorry for him. I was a little bit like, you know, he's, he's had no visitors. Uh, no one's calling him up, so I'll talk to him. But then he got that familiar with me that he'd just be doing it whilst I'm chatting to him. Just like he's my granddad or something. It's just like, oh, that's what he does. It's not what I mean as well. Stop doing that. <laughs> Honestly, unbelievable. He didn't even try and cover it with a cough. It was just like that's... <laughs> with a cough! How would you cover it with a cough? 
just non-stop. Got home and sat down. My pains are coming back, but the doctor said this would happen and that my insides are still in shock, so I need to take it easy. It's nine o'clock. I'm in agony. <laughs> I can't do the diary for the rest of the day. Jesus. So you may as well just tell us then what happened. Suzanne just got frustrated with me because I was rolling about on the floor and she was trying to watch Arthur, right? <laughs> uh, oh, my God. So gosh. that was on the other night. Uh, I and, thought it was uh, with your lodger. So, um, and she said, look, if you're in pain, do something. She said, you know... You went I, and got a cold plate. Yeah. No, use an ashtray. Plates are for liver damage. <laughs> got in a taxi. There you go. Um, he filled up on the way, which was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. That is he did. cheeky. That, that really, I mean, he could on the way to the pain. hospital. So Because uh, always not an ambulance driver. So anyway, he gets us there and he doesn't charge wow. us, which is pretty decent. Oh, that's all right, yeah. There you go. So this, this gay fella came through. And, How did you know he was gay? Um, just the way he was. I'm not having a go. He was a, he was a good fella. Do you know what I mean? A He'd, doctor, you mean? No, he was like a he was a nurse, right? And he he came through and just sort of went, oh, how are you? And I was like, oh, I've had better days. So he, he got as me you on mentioned a... in the diary. I remember the first time when I came here, they said the nurse might put a tablet up my arse. I thought the chances of that happening had just increased. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, but I, I would have let him do it. Wow. Honestly, I was that sort of out of it. Okay. Of course, you'd let him do it. He's a qualified nurse. No, but the way I am now, say if it was just a tablet for sorting out my blood pressure. Mm. And I walked in there and he went, oh, hello. And he said, yeah, let's pop that. I'd go, hang on a minute. <laughs> but, but what I mean is that night, I, w- I would have just let him put three up, honestly. <laughs> it's just weird how your body just goes, Excuse let him get me. on with it. And you let you trust anyone, don't you? When when you're in that much pain and you need And help. they're a qualified nurse, yes. Mm. Carl, of course, has written a poem about the experience <gasps> entitled Yay. My Ward. All I've done here, I've been through a... You know, uh, I don't know what the word is. A, a bad experience. Trauma. A trauma, yeah. I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. Go on then. Me, a Chinese fella and an old bloke who looked like Mr Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. He seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. Back. When I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fella wasn't Chinese. He was from Japan. <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. <laughs> that was a poem. You've got a little picture it. there, haven't you, of me sat in my ward. I'm sat there with that fella. A little one, yes. Who I didn't talk to. The old fella who had wind problems. And that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I like it. I, I like it. a lot of people make it. I like it. Exactly. You know why? It's like you need to write he even more. makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left he left that digression in. And I think that's that's great. It's pretty honest. It's had a le- It's art. It's beautiful. I love it. I liked it. He should write more. Late night last night, because I stayed up to watch a I'm, program I'm about I'm Still my- waiting. I actually got a couple. <laughs> A couple of gorilla poses in the comments. Some of them were actually really good. But I st- I'm still waiting on a Carl I think one. That's, that's great. It's pretty honest. I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a program about monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good. Of course it is. It's already good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, that is some more shit! This is what he says. This is what he gleaned from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth, This is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in, in, like, the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that sat on a bridge and um, a lot of tourists go through the area... No, it's to, a monkey who realised that, that if he sits there, it gets stuff because it looked like it's a cute little chimp begging. <laughs> no, but every time. Yeah, because you give a monkey, you give it. Oh, I'm as bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give, yeah, but it's all squirrels sorts learn that. If you don't go, oh, you wouldn't say, oh, went to the park, the squirrels waiting at the gate. You have to give them a toll to go in. They don't barely get anything in that. They come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. 
Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they the come music. out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No. no. <laughs> it's a horrible thing to do, isn't it? <laughs> no. So even... No. <laughs> I feel like this, this isn't the first time I heard that and laughed like that at that because it's just too good. Do you know what I mean? No. Even their days out are depressing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's it. a horrible thing to be, isn't it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> talking about what is it like to be a slug no, just because like the monkey even though it's been quite aggressive everyone was like oh give it some water it was, it was well like kitted out it had like you know chocolate bars oh bottled water some like you know fizzy stuff and all that an ipod it was listening to monkey news it could have there had one if it wanted one it was getting away with murder on that bridge and that's just because it was furry yeah if that was like a blob like a slug mm -hmm. there's no way people would be that friendly towards it and it just annoys me how you get this pecking order for like no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's what its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a mollusk like that's down on its fucking yeah, lap. It didn't live in a big country house no, and its wife it left it the kids when it started hitting the bottle. And I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... Last meal? The monkey. Would, that was its last meal. I just... Last meal? People but it wouldn't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't have... It must like a leaf or a... You know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it. It's not an insect. Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... <laughs> No, it's part it's of They that. hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. There you go, Why yeah. Why do you think it's part of that game? Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's It's in not their boring area. stuff to them. They're not, I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. Where you are is what you eat. I've never heard that before. It's usually you are what you eat. But where you are is what you eat. Okay. Okay. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas, go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so it's whatever you eat what's in that area. Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I hate that. I started to count backwards from 20. <laughs> When I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's why thinking, not? what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? So not, not really loud, but, like, uh, more of a mouth action so he could see who was doing it. Do you know, like Sorry, you, you just started miming counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what right. you know, he needs to do. I just said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now. My kidney's aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. There so I go. thought, right, I'm going to give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. I have left so many shops for the same reason. If I go in and you're just going to ignore me and there's no reason why you're not, you know... Being a cashier and me a customer, like for absolutely the, the shops, I, I leave, I leave, and I've I've got <laughs> they get mad when you leave. Oh, you know, screw you. <laughs> Again, you are giving it right. I'm gonna give him twenty <laughs> seconds. Never mouthed numbers though, and not backwards either. <laughs> I just leave. And if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. Again, you are one yourself... of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there for free. ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. the it's about, streets. No, I set myself oh. a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here. I'll give him 20. It worked. He served me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know. I was busy counting. <laughs> Oh, 
Jesus. Too freaking funny. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. I was busy counting. That that's like I want a shirt. I want Carl Pilkington quote shirts. I'm gonna have to make them because I obviously can't get that here. But oh dude. This guy is too freaking much. Adore him. Anyway, there you go. I lived! I'm excited. I am alive and well. And it it didn't hurt as much as I thought I did. I'm doing better. Yay, finally. It's been like two months. And then where it got really bad, it's been like 10 days. So Finally. Yay. Anyway, guys. If you see mosquitoes, kill them. It wasn't dengue, though. Uh, I'm sure. I, I, I rechecked the symptoms and everything. I know I already mentioned this on Taskmaster. But I re- Checked all the symptoms just in case to make sure I didn't have it. Dang a fever and uh, no, no, we're good. But kill all the mosquitoes you can find just because even if they're not the stripey bastards, you just kill them all. Anyway, that's my advice for today. <laughs> it's something. Anyway, guys, I am off. I'm happy. I feel good. And that's enough for me. So there you go. Do whatever you guys gotta do to feel good, because it feels great. <laughs> what? <laughs>